Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. So today we got some pretty cool stuff. We're uh, actually going to be putting the uh, timing chain back on this 4.7 G. 4.7, right? Ah, I was checking. Um, so anyway, we're putting the timing chain back on it. And, and what we're going to try to do is we're going to make this foolproof where anybody should be able to put this timing chain on and not mess it up. But there is a key few notes that you'll need to have in place and we're going to try to take the mystery out of it so we can save you some frustration um, we're going to talk about the timing marks how to actually align the cams um, just everything on it um, how, you know maybe how to line it up before it comes off how you set the chains up when we're done you know all that good stuff so I guess the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll get into Let's pretend you're right at the beginning and you had to take the chain off and we'll show you where, where all the marks are and what they mean. I right, put that on pause. Okay guys, so now we have the cover off and we want to show you with the cover off what you're looking for. You see right there where it says TDC? That's exactly what that is. That's top dead center. Now on the number one now what that means is it, it doesn't matter you're probably like well that's a compression stroke that's an exhaust stroke no forget that top dead center is top dead center is top dead center when you're taking this off okay and you can take it off in the exhaust stroke or on the uh, compression stroke it does not matter so you just take it off the TDC and you set your compression and exhaust stroke with the um, Camps. Now, here's what you're marrying up on the other side. Let's see if we can. Wonder. If, I just wonder if I could actually get that. Both of them actually. Oh, I got you. Hold on, right there. Okay, guys. So you see right here in the bottom corner. You see where he's pointing to now, and then point to the TDC. All right. When you have that harmonic balancer, vibration pulley, dampener, whatever you want to call it. The two need to be married right there. You match that mark up with the TDC. Can you spin it a little bit this way so we can actually... No, the other direction, the other direction. There we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So you see him right there. Go ahead and point out the... So that's what you do, guys. You take the uh, you take the harmonic balancer, turn it around until you get right there, and that's pretty much going to have you in the safety zone, right? Right. Okay. Now, but you're in the safety zone there. Period. That's all we're going to talk about on the bottom lining up because that's all you ever need to know. Now, there's actually a pulley that goes under a gear that goes behind that that actually lines up at the six o'clock position, which we'll be talking to, but. It still means the same thing. The six o'clock position for that gear is the same as the uh, top dead center mark that's on the harmonic. Okay, now what we're going to discuss is there. There will be four gear pulleys that we're going to be discussing, um, and three chains. So let's discuss where these pulleys need to be in reference with knowing that you're in the right place or not. Okay. So before you can put these back on, this is the exact positions they need to be sitting in. Let's start with the passenger side cam. Go and tilt that up where it's flat so the camera can pick it up real good. Okay, you see the V8? This is for the right side, which is, see the R that's over there? Okay, the V8 has to be at 12 o'clock, period. This is the passenger one. And the R will have the, the little dot on it, will have a little bit of paint in it. No screwing that up. All right, let's move over to the uh, driver's side. Okay, once again, the V8 will have to sit at the 12 o'clock. That's straight up. No problem. That's where that gear belongs. As you see, once again, the left side has the paint dimple on it. No problem. Okay, let's talk about the center pulley. Now, um, kind of show, you see the top where it's dotted, that obviously goes to the 12 o'clock, and that's where your crankshaft um, 
chain will go that's the one to the bottom and then of course you this pulley also pulls your two cranks and you see the two gears on the back we're going to show you how to line those up with no problem um, the only thing that's important about this one right here this is really key to how to set it up if you notice the two it has two windows on it see the slots and we will line up the chains for either one to be able to make sure that we are in the right location see there's no way to screw this up as long as you uh, do it correctly all right now the bottom one's kind of important this goes to your crank you see the dimple on the bottom now what's interesting about this is point out the keyway that keyway points to the exact location of the top dead center that remember the mark on the harmonic balancer and the uh, the, the cover so the cover and the balancer point right there at that key shaft and that right there is top dead center and what they do to put the dot right there is giving you a way to visually make sure that chain is 100 percent in the right location as you can imagine trying to put it over there at the one or two o'clock position would be almost impossible so anyway that's the important part of it so how does all this work well we're going to set the chains up next actually let's show them the um we should show them the tensioners and the um yeah and the guides all right hang on a second guys okay guys so the first thing have you got your pointer okay you all see the pencil right there Let's talk about the let's talk about the guides for a second. Let's start with the one by the crankshaft pulley. Now, what's interesting about this is this is all one piece. You see the metal right here. It all goes uh, across, and then it on the bottom as well, and that also holds a lower tensioner. Let's see if we can get that tensioner in place. As you see it right here, we have it. You see the the holder right there. And that's not a lot of tension, is it, Popsy? No, just keeps a little slop out of the chain. Just keeps a little slop out of the chain. When you install that, that one goes there. And this also holds the uh, oil, oil pump. pump. Yeah, that's right. Also holds the oil pump. Let me back out and pan a little bit. Now, uh, up on the driver's side right there, you see another tensioner behind that one. There you go. And you, ac you access that right there. Yeah. Bolt here. And this holds the um, tensioner down here also. What was those, 13 millimeters? Yes. This is actually a cover that goes over in case you don't know how that comes out. There's a yeah. cover that's on it. And, um, of course, you got to take those two bolts out. That's the bottom tensioner. And here's the two top ones. You kind of see them coming out of the bottom here. Now... You notice that one right there that's loose on the driver's side, that's your second tensioner. These are called, uh, what do they call them, sub-tensioners or... Uh, well, you got the primary and the secondary. Yes, primary and secondary, not sub, I guess. Right. This one pushes this way on the chain. Okay, put your finger on both of them. Alright. Or your pencil. One's here. These are the tensioners. As you see, guys, we have the tensioners compressed, and we've installed them along with all the running, you know, all the um, guides. Right. This one gets pushed up here against this one to hold the chain tight, and then this one is up like this and pushes down. Right. And these are fixed. This one here and this one that comes through here is fixed. And, how, and you know how we access this other one right here is through the same hole. Through this hole here for this bolt and the other bolt is right there. Okay, I finally got it in view. Okay, guys, you, can you guys see that? That's where the other one mounts in right there. All right, now, uh, while we're on the tensioners, why don't we show them one and show them how it actually works. All right, what we're going to discuss now is the tensioner itself. As you can see on the other ones on the motor, they still have the retaining clip that holds the piston down. All right, let me show them that real quick so they, they kind of got that in their head. All right, here's the uh, retaining clip that comes in it new. The piston is here, and you can see the difference. This is all the way out. 
this you compress and then put the pin back. Let me get that. I didn't have that in the shot. Okay, there you go. This compresses down and you put the... Uh, the pin goes in the pin slot goes right in there, the yeah. Here, which is this here. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. So that's all there is to the secondary tensioner. Um, what about the primary? Tell them how we collapsed that. You just took a pair of pliers. Oh, this one here. Yeah, we just did that and... Uh, what you do is you squeeze. Hang on, let me get a little close. Okay, let me see if I can get into that. Let it, okay, now explain to us how that works. There's the pin that goes in there, but to take the chain off, take a pair of pliers right here and squeeze gently until this hole and the hole in the guide and the hole in the back line up so you can shove that through. And it and this is kind of tricky too, isn't it? You want to yes. take these tensioners off before you ever, ever think about... Um, and if you squeeze this one too hard... It's going to break. It's going to break. And then you buy this whole piece. Which Again. means you're buying everything anyway. Right. And by the way... Um, the way to do this is go new. Do not use the old stuff. You're down to this part. Change the oil pump. Change whatever you can and do it right the first time because Murphy's Law, you get it all back together, the oil pump stops working, one of the guides break, because this is this plastic. It's you know, it's a heavy duty plastic, but they do break. And this the one down there we just showed you did fall off when we compressed it, taking it apart. It it was compressed, the pin was in it, next thing we know, the guide was laying on the garage floor. And we weren't anywhere near it, so it. So that could actually happen when you put the chains back on. You're all done, and then bam. Bolt it back up, and it. What breaks. did it cost us for that gears? I don't remember. Uh, like hundred bucks or something. Eight, yeah, it wasn't that expensive. Yeah, and it comes with the. They'll send you the guides and all the chains and all that yeah. stuff. So you know, that's Everything the way to do it. And you can, if you really want, they you can buy the whole complete gear set. I mean, yeah. it comes with all of it if you want to spend that kind of money. Uh, it's very hard unless you really screw up a gear that you need to replace it. Yeah, those gears are pretty much, you know. Proof. Yeah. All right, so look, I think we've talked about the guides. We've talked about, you know, the location of the gears. Now let's talk about the location of the cams because this is pretty simple stuff. Um, let's go, I'm going to show them the cams now and we'll show them what do we mean by that. All right, we're looking at the driver's side cam here, and this is what's important. You're like, well, all these gears are off. How do you know where everything's at? Pretty simple stuff, ain't it, Popsy? It is. Locate your, look at your gear. There's the slot. All right, hold on. Let me get that gear in your hand. Okay, slide it on there real quick. There's the V8. There's the pin. That's how it has to line up. As you can see, it's close. To be in. It needs to be right here. So at the one, twelve, yeah, it needs to be at the twelve o'clock. Right. But when you're when you take the chains off, guys, those uh, everything's under pressure, so you're probably going to go off a degree or two, and that's okay. We're going to show you how we actually line these up right. so it comes out perfect every time. But definitely, when you put the cam on, locate your pin. Yeah, so let's pretend you took a put a, if you put a brand new cam on it. Put it with the tit up. That's how you do it. Right. You, 12 o'clock, if you put it on that. And okay, now let's move over. He's pointing over here. As you can see, this one naturally fell closer than this one. I tried to get it straight up and down, and every time I tightened it down, it went that way. So that's where you have to start. Uh, the other thing that's important about this, this also has a reluctor wheel on it. This one, let's show them that. All right, so there you go. That's a reluctor wheel. And basically what's happening is, is your cam sensor's got a little magnet. Show me the side and you see the little cutouts right there. Yep. And that's how it's taking its pulse right there. There's a little magnet and every time it goes past it with a cutout, it drops a signal. So you definitely want to be mindful of where that cam sensor's at when it comes off. And uh, same operation though, right? It's the Now, what's going to seem odd to you guys is we are actually going to we're not we're going to put these gears on last on the uh, on the vehicle, and the reason is is we're going to force the cams to marry the chains. We're going to move the cams over to the right spot, 
and when it's in the right spot, then we put them on. yeah, as you see the little tit hangs up, like that. rotate the cam and then slide it back. Yeah, on. we're going to rotate the cam backwards and see the, the knob there and the, we'll make the cam come marry it. And that's how this is designed to do. You do not want to put the gear on the end of that and try to meet the chain. It just isn't going to work. You put the chain over the gear and then move the cam to meet the gear. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay, so there we go. Um, I think that pretty much covers what we got going on here. And uh, all right, I think we're going to go ahead and show you how we align the chains up to make all this happen. Now we're going to show you the timing marks on the chain, which line up to the marks on the gear cam gears. We showed you this before, right by the R. There is a uh, indention and a color mark there. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm just now getting to it. Okay. Go ahead and flip that up. Okay, on each one of them has a painted dot, which you clearly can see. This is on the right side, and so it'll have that one done, which is also known as the passenger side. And then the um, drivers... has it right there okay now what I'm not really getting a good view on is the chains um, tilt it up or we can act okay there you go so that's the you your chains are identical the two long chains are identical okay and they have the same exact markings one is a black mark which will either a go on the left side or be the right side dimple okay and then it's got two black ones on the bottom and there you go, right there. That's perfect. We can see the two, and they're um, they're gonna this. It'll either go through that slot and or that slot. So that's where those two go, and then you have a smaller chain that comes with this, and the double the double colored ones go on the twelve o'clock position of your idler, which is right here. And the single one's going to go at the six o'clock position of that. So the dimples is where the chain links go, guys. Get it? One dimple there, one dimple there, and both your cams have a dimple. No problem. The other two colored ones uh, go right here inside of the uh, window. So the doubles go through the windows, the singles go to a dimple. All right, we're going to show you our trick on how we put this together and come back and take a look at it. Yep. Hey guys, so here's the first thing you do. You take your first chain, and we know that this is the 12 o'clock position, so we start on the passenger side, because the back one we're going to need, that's the one that goes on the back pulley. Can you see that? So all we're going to do is we just kind of got it in our hand, and we're going to lay it up here, and we're going to be able to see through this window. I don't know if you can actually make that out or not, but that's where the two black um, tilt it a little bit. There we go, right there. There you go, perfect. Alright, cool. So there you go. So that we're just going to slide that on there and make sure we can see it through the window. Now, to keep this from being a pain in the butt, we're going to take some rubber bands, a couple of them. Lay this down for just a second. Hopefully it doesn't come off while I'm attempting my little Houdini trick. Houdini trick, and I didn't make it tight enough. All right, well this can happen to anybody. So I'm gonna see if I can. Of course, rubber bands are one of those things. Alright, now once you get the rubber band on here, and hopefully you won't it won't do to you what it just done to me, which is be a pain. Can you see that? I'm just opening it. Uh, hold on guys, gotta go. Matter of fact, put the rubber band on first. <laughs> and uh that'd be the easy way to do this. So let me this came off, this will probably happen to you too, so I'm at the twelve o'clock. And I've got to get it through this window on the back. So, let me go back and find it. 
Ah, here it is. And just a matter of looking through the window. We're there. Let's see if we can get this sucker to cooperate with us. Now, with a little luck, it didn't move at all. And I want to kind of give you guys an idea of what's going on here. See this? We got it nice and tight. And we can still see it through the 12 o'clock. I mean, I'm sorry, the side slot. Let's see, it's 12 o'clock, so I guess, what is that? 7 o'clock? I don't know. Wherever that side window's at, I got both of my black ones coming through there. So the either pulley is getting real close to being done now. Now, what am I going to do on this one? Same thing. That's why you put the rubber band there, so you can actually work with it. Without it falling apart. Trust me, you don't want to deal with it falling apart at all. It's too much of a hassle. Alright, so here we go. Here's round number two. Let's see if I learned my lesson from the last time. It says 12 o'clock, so I'm working right here on this side. Oh, you know what I better do, guys? I better just take a rubber bands and get them set. What do you think, Popsy? Wouldn't hurt. Believe me, he'll let me know. What a nice guy. <laughs> well, we can rebuild engines, but I don't know about rubber bands. No. Ah, all right. I think we've about got it. Sucker down. I'm kind of showing you this guys in real time because that way you'll see you'll feel better about yourself. You'd be like, man, that guy on the video was really stupid. I can do this in like three seconds. Of course, the cameraman's agreeing with me. I don't know how I feel about that. May have overcompensated on this rubber band. Okay, I think I got enough there. See how I'm kind of, I might need to back it up a little bit, but I got enough to get it done. And once again, my two right here, I'm going to put through the window. So I verify my 12 o'clock position with my dimple. And we know that this right here is for the um, driver's side, so it's got to come through here. And it's going to be on the second pulley right here. Driver's side coming through right here. Now let's see how we actually do. All right. Of course, you guys know whenever you're working with chain, it's kind of a kind of like working with chain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. There we got the. I'm going to verify it inside the window. Tilt it. There we go. Perfect. There you go. And now look, I'm going to see my rubber band. Hopefully, I can keep enough. Okay, now the little pig's got pigtails. See how? Yeah, I did that myself. I'm going to start a hair and makeup channel next. Serious about this, don't laugh. Okay. Now, what's the next thing that's important? We're not going to do anything with the gears on the outside, but we are going to worry about. See, we're gonna we're gonna slip these things that these are not going to go through the channels with the gear on them. So we're going to fish them up through there. We're going to put a rubber band on the end of these and then attach something we can feed through there 
and actually very gently pull. Okay guys, so we're going to work on the crank slash 12 o'clock position on the idler. So how this worked is, see what happened was, the double one It was right on the 12 o'clock, just like this. We let our little pigtails hang down. So 12 o'clock is like this. And then the dimple. Can you see the dimple? Okay, the dimple goes right here. And this is basically your structure. Now, it takes two people to put this on. Him and I are gonna, we're gonna work together on this. We're gonna pull this up and when we get ready to slide it on. But, first and foremost, actually how this is gonna work is, is I'm gonna slide this little key on first. I'm gonna slide the crank key on first because uh, I'm gonna tell you kinda how we have to do it and that is to, um, we're going to tighten the, the crankshaft bolt so therefore we can adjust to the left or to the right. Or um, we're going to have to attempt. Anyway, you're going to have to be left or right just to give you some flexibility. So we're going to put that little key on, make sure it's nice and straight. And then we're going to, we're going to slide it up on the vehicle. All right, so just put it on pause. Okay guys, we've reached a point in this party where we're going to have to put the, um, the gears all together. But I kind of want to show you a little, just a little bit of work we did ahead of time to make sure that this was going to go down nice and smooth. Um, can we get this over here and I'm going to... Here you go. I'm showing this one. We took, uh, we went ahead with all the dimples. We went ahead and remarked them white especially the one on the bottom, the one that goes over across the crank, because if you see it, it's very, um, it's hard to see it from that angle when you're working with everything else. So go ahead and make that dimple white and paint the tooth white. So therefore, when you're looking down there, you know that it's at the six o'clock position. We have readjusted and put the, the crankshaft bolt back in the crankshaft to be able to make sure it's good. Don't worry about moving the crankshaft because with the cams in the 12 o'clock and no chains on them, they're all closed, so the pistons are not gonna hit anything. No worries there, you can adjust all you want until you put chains on it, then the adjustment's over. Right? Correct. So what do you wanna do? You wanna just uh, kinda of set it up like right here looking in, and uh, maybe, hopefully they can see how this goes. See if we can make this work. Okay guys, you'll notice we have a little bungee cord coming from the top here, just kind of feeding down on both sides. There's a second one. I've got the crank pulley in the view and I'm not sure how much of this action you'll actually be able to see, but let's see how it works. We're gonna come from the bottom with the crank chain lower, slip it on, because you see the, the pulley bolt's already on there. We put it on there. So, we're gonna have to, you know, marry that first. That goes on first. Then show them where the uh, idler sprocket goes in. Idler sprocket's gonna go right there. Chains are gonna go up third. And then we're gonna reset and show you how to marry the, um, the uh, gears to the cams. All right, so I'm not even gonna put it on pause. I'm just gonna zoom out just a little bit so they can kind of catch most of this. Guys, sorry if we cover you up, but I mean, we kind of have to do the job, so you know how that goes. Alright, first case scenario, put this one on. Okay, guys, I don't know if you can actually see this, but this 12 o'clock right here, he's got those, and... Got to get on the on the program here. 
I'm telling you guys right now, this is a very hard job to do. I think I'm on. Uh, you want to verify that with light and I'll hold this. Okay, so we're on. Okay, let me try to. issue there. Right, hang on guys, we're going to put some goose grease on that bad boy. Alright. Of course it wants to be difficult. Everything was going way too easy. We probably this a little bit. All right, guys, we didn't think about that, but since it has been cleaned, it was just a little bit of uh, resistance. So we're going to grease her up. And this thing just spins freely. Like, there's no guide on it or nothing, so. I think that's it. I'm going to put the camera on. All right, just hold that right there. We're going to put this on pause and bring y'all back in a different angle. Okay, guys, so um, took six hands and we only had four, but, you know, we did it. Keynotes. You notice how we have the, um, the bungee cords holding the chains up, and we have not even addressed the, the cam marriage yet on either side. All right. We now, we definitely have, okay, also the tensioner pin on the uh, bottom around the crank actually popped loose, but, I mean, we were already on. We have verified that we are at the 6 o'clock on the crank and 12 o'clock on the um, idler. Now, to make sure we were all the way in, go ahead and show them what we did. We just kind of tapped it a little bit. Just give it just a little tap on either, or press this side. And just give it a little tap until it bottoms out and it will stop. So yeah, once it stops, it's done. Same thing with this. A little tap. When it stops, it's against it. Now, what we have to deal with now is, remember the rubber bands that we were so adamant about placing on the vehicle? Well, as we take each one and marry it with the crank, we're going to take the rubber band off once it gets inside. Once we put the gear, marry the gear to the chain. All right, so give me a second, and we're going to get you showing up how to get this set up. The first thing we're going to do is get a uh, pair of vice grips, and we're going to show you on the crank where to grab a hold of, because you're going to have to, like I said, be able to move that to be able to marry the other one. Okay, so we're on our first cam that we're going to marry, and um, we got a pair of vice grips, and go ahead and show them where the ridges are at. This isn't going to hurt anything. It doesn't look pretty, but it's not going to hurt nothing. There's nothing that runs here. You can put your finger all the way around it. There's nothing there. So we're going to put a pair of vice grips on it. It's locked in. And go ahead and move the vice grips so they can see how it kind of marries the... Uh... All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we're going to get the next part. Okay, guys, so we're going to marry our first one. We had to take the rubber bands off real quick. And we're going to get this keyway and the other keyway we've been telling you about to line up. So it's got to come up a little bit, 12 o'clock. Quite there. I think that's pretty close. A little bit more, maybe. Okay, see, another thing too you got to kind of keep in mind is it's got a it's got a little outer ridge that's got to kind of sink over the Okay, you got to come up a little bit. 
Okay, we're going to have to reset, so go ahead and pause that. Okay, guys, now this is how you know you got a marriage like it's supposed to be. You see the little tit coming out right there? The keyway, whatever you want to call it. It's almost flush with this gear, and there's no slop. It's got a little center ring that goes over it, and then this right here marries through the center. All right, so that's how you actually marry them together. We're going to come over here. And you notice the B8? It's definitely yeah, the V8, the V8 right now is at the 12 o'clock. There's no other way to do this. If you're at 6 o'clock on the bottom, 12 o'clock here, you've got both of your chain links coming through, uh, both of your windows. You're at 12 o'clock, and this is on the compression. Right, and there's your mark. Yeah, and there's your mark right there. So that's that. That's at 12 o'clock. That's why you take the cams and meet the, uh, the gears. Right. All right, so we're going to do this other one real quick. Okay, guys, we're moving right over to the passenger side. Um, you see the uh, the end of the cam. He's got the chain. We've already pulled the rubber bands. And we're going to see if we can do this one on front of the camera. Guys, no one's actually looking at this, so I'm sorry if we black you out where you can't see anything. But I'm going to try to make it where you can. Because this is so important on how this works. All right, guys, coming in. I'm going to try to keep my big, ugly head out of the way. All right, there's my right. And you can go ahead and let go of that. He was holding it with a bungee cord based on... Now, because this has got the, the reluctor wheel on it, I'm going to have to slide it over it a little bit and kind of relax it. There we go. I don't know if the camera can see it, but there I go. I've got my black. Now, it's got a little ridge that this thing rides on, so I'm going to put the bottom of the ridge. Yes. Yeah, he's going to goo goo. <laughs> goo goo goo. He's going to goo goo it. We're going to goose grease this just to keep everything happy. You can never worry about oiling up stuff too much. Alright, now hopefully we can get this to pop on on film here. This would be really cool for you to see. Uh, can't see it, but I guess you're right. Still don't see it. Alright guys, this thing's slipping. Gotta reset. All right, hold this. Okay, guys, we reset the vice grips because they were slipping a little bit, so we need a little tighter grip on this side. Go ahead. Come on, Houston. I see it. I see it. I see it. Ah, we need an eighth of an inch. A little, just a little more. God, she's right there. Just can you bump me just a hair. That's where it's supposed to be. I don't know why she's. Hold that thought, everybody. We're gonna do a little tap test and. Wow. Yeah, see guys, this is what really happens on tape. I don't think so. I don't think so. Nah, 
she's out on there. All right, we're going to pause and reset back up again. See, that's how it works. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're having a hard time with this, so what we did was we knew that we, we could feel it on, but it was still kind of wobbly. It wasn't quite merry. So with him holding it there, I just basically... I kind of snugged it on there and it just started kind of pulling it in. You got to be very careful when you do that, but that'll work. Now let's release it and see what we got. Watch out for the black eye. We catch it from this angle. Woo! All right, man. So I guess I'm going to get behind the camera and show you pulling these uh, tensioners. Everything's lined up. Um, We'll show them our work. Okay, we're good. Okay, so first off, we're going to come over here to the driver's side. You clearly see the black and the one on the left. This cam over here is kind of out of the the place there, but you see it, it's, it's on. Our 12 o'clock is there. He's verifying the uh, windows. Are the windows there? Yeah. Got two black ones showing on the windows. V8. V8. Okay, guys, so here's what we're at at the 6 o'clock on the bottom of the crank. Um, so, what we're going to do now, it looks like we're, we're there. Coming up, we got both windows. We got the 12 o'clock here. And once again, you've seen the keyways lined up. And let's look at the V8. The V8's at the 12 o'clock right there. Back at the dock. And let's look at this one. Okay, guys, that right there, this is this vehicle is perfectly timed right now. All right, so he's going to have to pull his um, tensioners out. And verify that the chain is resting on the guides. Yeah, Correct. yeah, check make your sure guides. Make sure it's are, there. Everything's everything good. Is there. Everything's lined up. One. Hold on, let me go down here and watch him pull the other one. Uh, don't worry about those sound effects. They're free. Pulled the second one. All right, now let's kind of mess around with the tension and see what happens. Nice and snug. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. So we're going to put a uh, crank bar on this thing. And we're going to give it a couple rotations. So he's putting some uh, goose grease on this, just regular motor oil, and why are you doing that? This, <clears throat> the guides and everything are plastic, and they're dry. The chain is dry at this point. Everything's as dry as can be, so just to make things turn easier and not harm anything, doesn't hurt. Yeah, it's just not going to hurt. It's going to be immersed in oil as soon as the engine starts running, but keep in mind, it's not runned yet. Is that a word, not runned? Not run. It is now. It's not, not run. It's it? not good English. When you put an ED on the end, it's not run it in a while. I haven't run it in a while. Um, okay, so let's look at our marks. They're still good. You see everybody? All right, we're going to start turning her around. Now we're going to mention that the marks in the windows that are on the pulley, this pulley right here, they're never going to line up again, but the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock on those pulleys will. Man, you can just hear her hiss and compression. How's it feel, Popsy? Different? Yep. Okay, how many? Okay, this right here is going to be at the 12 o'clock, so we went one revolution. Stop your center one at the 12 o'clock. Is that about 12? 12. 
And there's the V8. All right, hold on. Let's see over here. Oh, the, the thing's in the way. Yeah, there's the V8, guys. Can you see it? Yeah, and that mark will not be on the chain either. Yeah, at this point, all you're verifying is the two V8s being in the straight-up position. And none of the valves hitting. <laughs> none of the valves hitting. That 12 o'clock, and of course, the one on the bottom will be at the 6 o'clock. So that's all that's going to line up from now on. So we need two revolutions, so that's one? I, would, I usually give them four, but yeah. Okay. Now we haven't uh, torqued everything back to like it's back to specs, but you get the basic idea. I think he's gonna make me start pulling on this thing. I can tell from the expression on his face that it must be got some compression. There I am again. Must be dumb been got. <laughs> Done got some. All right, you're coming up on the twelve o'clock again. You calling that twelve o'clock? Twelve. V8 and V8. Uh, okay, that one's kind of impeded. There we go. We kind of see it. There's the V8. Yeah, you guys see the V8 up there? It's kind of... Right there. And let's go over here. Basically, when the V8 is up, these two pins are horizontal. Same thing with these two holes over on this. This one doesn't have the sensor on it, so it just has two holes. So right. those should be horizontal and it'd be eight at 12. Yeah, guys, so that's pretty much all there is to this. Um, so we're gonna show you how we, uh, we're gonna torque up that center one. Uh, we've already torqued the uh, all the timing guides, so we just gonna do the cams and the uh, center and of course we'll when we put the oil cover back on it we'll then worry about the harmonic balancer but that's another video for another day actually probably two day but anyway <laughs> um all right dude so let's go ahead and show them how we actually torque the uh, cams oh and guys please pay attention you notice the black dots are all over the place they're strictly there to let you line this car up one time that's how you get it perfect the first time. How you verify secondly is your V8's in the north and the 12 and 6. You have four points of reference. Because there's the black one here, there's the dot, there's the two black ones that go in the window here. And it's like, I, I forget how many hundreds or thousands of revolutions it have to make before they'd ever line up again. It's a mathematical nightmare. Uh, nightmare. <laughs> yeah, this is some Einstein stuff. All right, so, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and show you how to, to torque these. Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and torque the, the cam sprockets. Now let me tell you something, um, a lot of people, uh, forget that, forget what a lot of people do. You don't want to put any undue stress on the chain, so what you got to do is you actually want to hold the sprocket in place. How you do that, you get you one little sprocket holder like this and they come with variable sizes. You can pick these up or some version of it just about anywhere from Google, uh, Amazon, any of those places, but it's not a very expensive tool, but it's one that will save you a lot of time and a lot of energy and not risk damaging anything. And basically how you do it is, see what happened was, here we go, um, first y'all see the two holes right here, there's actually three so you could, you could gather it up anywhere you wanted to go. Okay, hold on. Think on this particular. Sometimes you got to be kind of careful because it doesn't seem to want to work unless you work it a little bit. Okay, so there you go. I put the socket on first on the, my particular one. You know, just whatever you got. I've set my torque at 90, and. Basically, I'm just going to... Alright, you want to get that one right there? Or you want me to hold that one? There it goes. 
All right, guys, so we do 90 on those. I'm going to put you on pause and go do this other one, then we'll show you how to do the idler. Okay, guys, so this is an idler sprocket. It's 25 pounds of torque, and it clicked. Um, I want to kind of point out something, too. The other, the other gear on the... Um, on well, the passenger side cam only had one hole because of where you know it's already got the rivets that hold in the sprocket or the um, the reluctor wheel. Now where's my tool at? So let me tell you what I did, guys. I just I just basically took it down to one and show them right here. I just went ahead and adjusted it to where the hole was down, kind of at the bottom. slid it in so it would hold it and put something right here and of course Popsy was holding on to it and that's how we did it. Just and just a little tip out there that might help. Alright guys, so let me tell you goodbye. Nah, I'm gonna really tell you goodbye. So look man, appreciate you uh, taking the time. This is a pretty long video. Um, it's a little bit involved, but the reason we took the time to do this is because um, you know, someone tried to do this before, and the, this, the, the consumer is the one who took the hit. I mean, he spent $3,000 having this job done, and some idiot didn't take the time to do one of the crank uh, sprockets right. Timing goes off, wipes out four valves, you got a whole engine job, guys. I mean, so this is how important it is. Uh, we got a lot of exciting things coming. Jen's really getting uh, ready for Vegas. It's going to be cool. We're going to bring you guys with us. Um, we'll kind of share that journey with you. Remember, support Homefront Hogs. We're all about our military. And um, subscribe to the channel. We might just make a couple more videos that could possibly save you. I don't know. This probably saved you a couple grand. Not to mention all the medication from your doctor from not being able to figure out. Is this supposed to be on the exhaust stroke? Is it on a compression stroke? Uh, what does this go to? What does that go to? Well, now you know what it all goes to. Every bit of this timing is right here. If you follow it just like we told you to, guess what? Your car is going to start up. Sign up, baby. See you later. You can push the bottom one.